Hello once again and welcome to Call of the Week, the show where we decide what decks we add to our collection and what decks we call. I'm Brobnar89, your host as always. I'm here once again with Siaka. Hello, Siaka. How are you? Hello. It's good to be back. All right. Let's get right into it here. We have one new deck this week, and Greg will be returning from victory last week. I'm going to be handing Greg over to Siaka, and I will be taking this new deck, Extrode Man. Spawn of Acrophile. This is a Logo Sanctum Untamed deck. Interesting notable point about this deck. Lots and lots of creature control. We've got Double Savage Clash. We've got Spirit's Way. And we've got Krizap. So there's a board wipe in every single house here. The Double Savage Clash has an interesting pairing with Fangtooth Cavern, Rapid Evolution, and the Dark Amber Vault. Gonna make some, for some unusual choices. Not a ton of Amber control in this deck. You've got a potential big play on Bring Low. Stall your enemy out for at least one turn. So that's probably something you're gonna want to either archive or hang on to for the right moment. There's an Archivist in this deck, but not a lot of ways to get the Archivist into the Archive, so you might end up just playing it as a creature. There's a couple of lucky hits you might get with the Smoko or the Eclectic Inquiry, but other than that, you've only got Sloppy Lab work to get it in there. And then once you do have it in there, it's not like you're going to be archiving a whole lot of other stuff. So the Archivist kind of ends up being a not super useful in this deck. Siaka, you got any input on this deck? Interesting observations? I think Dark Amber Vault can change the game a lot. Mm. Um, if you get it early, can draw a lot faster. I think in this matchup, neither deck has much uh, Amber control, so I expect the game to go pretty fast. I wonder how much impact the artifacts are going to make, actually, because Greg has to reclaim by natures so they can they can be taken out right and extra man has uh one reclaim by nature as well so the artifacts are not going to be staying around for long right although extra man has more artifacts and i think font of the eye in particular um is going to be a big target yeah uh, just because it is amber control and there's not very much of that going on in either deck really yeah amber spine mongrel and lieutenant gorvanol can be persistent threats that have to be dealt with gorvanol being able to capture while cleaning up their board and amber spine mongrel if they have a board they can't utilize it without benefiting you too yeah there are a lot of mutants in both decks it's even yeah so it might it, it might depend on when the Torado comes out and um how much of your mutants are in the discard versus how many of mine are in the discard. Right, right. Might be worth playing him anyways, just because he himself is also a mutant, so you get the one extra on the board. And uh, given that there are two other mutants in Logos, like if they're already out there and you drop them, you can get some value. Yeah, immediate value. Yeah, with the, the low amber control, this should be a very interesting game. Uh, Greg, obviously lacking... Um, in as much creature control as Extrode Man. Extrode Man definitely has the upper hand in terms of creature control. Greg is going to be able to uh, generate Amber a lot more quickly than Extrode Man. Extrode Man's going to have to try to control the board. So I think Greg might be the favorite here just because Greg's going to be able to burst a little bit more. And since both are low on Amber control, that might end up tip tipping in Greg's favor, that dynamic. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Uh, I'm curious to see how it's going to play out. I think whoever gets their uh, draw engine going first will have a big advantage. Mm. All right, should we get started? Let's head into the game. Sounds good. I think I'm going to send this hand back. 
it's 2-2-2. Two, two, two. I'm seeing cards that aren't too helpful at the beginning of the game. It has daughter, so I'm reluctant to send it back, but I think I've got to do it. Well, that's the risk of sending back and end <laughs> up with something much worse. <laughs> uh, what I had was way better than what I mulliganed into. That's uh, that's keyboard for you. Ooh, this might be the worst five cards you could possibly put in the opening hand. That's bad news for you. <laughs> yeah, this is like the <laughs> worst mulligan I've ever had in Keyforge. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I'm excited to be able to go back and see what it was. Uh, I'm actually going to keep this because I've got two Logos cards in hand. One is Sloppy Lab Work. Which is going to let me archive something that's going to be good for later and then get rid of the other Logos card. Seems pretty good. Nice. Okay, so it wasn't the Archivist. It was, it was not the Archivist, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you would know if it was. But it leaves me almost entirely with one house in hand, so that's cool. cool. Oh, man. This is going to be a sad turn. Oh, yeah. ouch. Two resurgence in the discard. That's a bummer. Yeah, even with Logos, it's still vulnerable to bad ordering. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm feeling pretty good about this. Uh, lots of Sanctum in the hand. Lots of fight abilities in the hand that are going to let me do some reaping since you don't have anything for me to actually fight. Feeling pretty good. Turn first full turn all the way up to five amber and a almost entirely new hand. Yeah, it looks good. Not a bad place to be. Already f uh, five sanctum cards gone. Okay, I got some logos. Put some damage on Gorvanal. Get rid of the Grey Rider. Oh, yeah, that diametric charge. Okay, this is better. <laughs> You're looking at look at that logos to the rescue. I think I go Sanctum again here, just because I've moved through so much Sanctum already. Um, and I can further kind of craft my hand. And I've got decent board and I've got a got a cleansing wave in hand here so that's gonna um, make some big amber gen for me. Nice. Put some damage on both of these guys. Clean it up. Reap here. And I get the added bonus of capturing one onto the Gorbanol through the fight. So that's seems pretty good. Okay, pretty good burst. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't have a solution. The cleansing Wave is, uh, I think it's a lot better in this set than when it was back in Coda, because um, there's so many creatures, and then all the pinging damage uh, mm -hmm. in this set, it's just like you can get a lot done with Cleansing Waves. So I could advance my own case. I think I'll do that. Let's see. What did I get? Archive. It's all right. Love that eclectic inquiry. All right, get some efficiency with the sacro bot. Could kill Gorvidal. I don't necessarily want to discard anything in my hand. Mm. So maybe I'm just going to remove the threat. All right. Got to love the sacro bot for that flexibility there. Totally. Five power and two armor, you're perfectly happy to fight instead of reaping. Hmm. I think I need to clean up your board here. Oh, and I can actually keep you off check with the font. Cavern comes down. Song of the Wild getting discarded. Savage Clash. Keep that. Keep that. 
and then rapid evolution to make him bigger than your guy and then capture one and then he dies to the cavern not bad pretty good <laughs> since I'm lacking in creature control and your deck blows up the board a lot I'm wondering if I should even play creatures so I'll wild bounty and then I'll use this reclaim that I've been holding on to for a while get rid mm -hmm. of font of the eye yeah that seems right and then Gloriana's useless and I have a flume with a draw icon but I don't think I'm likely to draw into more untamed so I'm just going to ditch it that's probably the right call because now there's a good chance I have to kill my my own guy uh, with the Fangtooth Cavern and you get your amber back so I think here I actually just want to flush out almost all of the remaining sanctum that I have and then I can keep you off check for one more turn while putting myself into check. So I do want to take my archive. I have to discard the fangs of Fuselheart unfortunately because I don't want to purge my own guy and give you give you your amber back. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, not, not what I want to do. Bring low. Only going to capture one but Keeps you off check, so. Mm hmm He's coming out to reap for one and to be the target for the cavern. Reap for one there. That's going to be it. Right, I've got a handful of shadows. Heist Knight not doing much. How many thieves does this deck even have? Not a ton. Two? Uh, spike trap? Hmm. Oh, man. General Salvador. I don't know if I can kill him. Look, ever. I mean, he might die to Fangtooth Cavern eventually. <laughs> yeah, I've got to start playing some creatures, though. They, uh, These shoulder heads actually have amber on them. Oh, yeah, that's pretty good. And I, I think you would play a creature anyway. I, Salvador's going to be around for a while. Hopefully I can draw into standardized testing or something. All right, opportunist. Put it here. Damage. I'm going to mug myself. Um, basically, making it a steal. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good move. Okay. Forge my second key. So I am up two keys to none, but with your big pile of 11 amber and my um, one big amber control play already out. I would definitely say this is this is not over. All right, so I'm going logos. I'm just gonna m move through the stuff I've got in my hand. Let's go ahead and play Leto first. Let's see what we get. Eclectic inquiry, not bad. Both with a uh, double amber pips on them. Really can't complain. I would have liked to have drawn my Everest in principle right now, but no such luck. Hmm. There's an argument to discard my two Logos creatures here so I can kill off one of your Shoulderids, but I don't think it's that worth it, really. I mean, the Archivist is just going to die to the Fangtooth Cavern anyways, so maybe that maybe that would have been the right call. Oh yeah, huh. your mug lets you steal one and get around the, uh, m the Book of Malith Fraction. Yes. <laughs> and actually, because I mugged, if you had discarded those creatures, Fangtooth would have killed that shoulder it and you'd be right. able to check. That would have made it definitely worth it, for sure. It might have been worth it anyways, but I really wanted to play Torado because you've already played a lot of your mutants and I have not. Mm -hmm. So I think I will try to press here. Okay, because you didn't get to six, I have a lot more options, thankfully. Yeah. I think I'm going to go with Logos. Makes sense. My guess is you need to get some, find some Amber Control quick. Yeah. 
Oh, you found the testing. That that is true. Um, okay, I made a goof. I'm uh -oh. gonna have to play a diametric charge on my own people. But it's okay. Oh. Daughter Cumex. Not super good. Well, this is sad. It's okay. I'm in a so close to being able to do something cool <laughs> with Untamed, but it's not going to happen. Oh, I have some interesting options here. I think I have to go Logos because I've got the Effervescent Principle, and uh, this seems like a pretty good time to use it. Hmm. I mean, I have five too, but I lose two versus you lose five, so seems worthwhile. Fair trade. Yeah, it's also the uh, this is a very awkward FRS in principle with a capture icon on it, and seeing as how I have no creatures right now, it seems like a, a good time to use it. Yeah, that is that is no good. Yeah, it's like best case scenario. Uh, it, they lose the same amount and you capture one but then like worst case scenario they lose one less I was like that's <laughs> decidedly not good yeah okay oh, what do you have oh that's everything okay yeah I'm gonna curse zap wipe your board fission bloom did nothing for me this turn you still get to forge here but I think it was the right call to take away five of your amber mm -hmm. now I'm feeling a lot less comfortable <laughs> than I was a turn or two ago yeah now that I have two keys yep and what this deck can really speed up mm -hmm. well I think I gotta play toward a, an out here so I'm gonna go with shadows mm -hmm. gotta set up a big play somehow right that Chris app hurt. Yeah, because you could have reaped for at least two there. Either either house you chose. It might have been better for me to have gone untamed and gone into check on my last turn. But I don't know. It was a gamble. Hmm. Okay. Well, I have really only one choice at this point. Untamed. Attendant's gonna draw me another card here. There we go. Morgul has a draw icon on it as well. Pop the spike trap. Uh, I'm not so worried about a safe place without any amber on it. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna do much at this point in the game. No, it is not. No. Especially since my, uh, uh, FRS and Principles already burned. Uh, Savage Clash is not going to help me out much here. I've got so much board control I can afford to, to get rid of it. And that's going to be my turn. I thought I was getting up to check this turn. What happened? Well, the Fangtooth will get the Lyco Thief, I think. Right, right, right. That'll do. Okay, well, I can... There's only one house that will cause me not to lose. <laughs> what did I draw with that? Not helpful. I think I'm pretty much toast, but we'll see. If I don't play Qmex, I'm definitely not drawing another card, so this has to come down. <laughs> okay, Lethalogica. Oh, discarded Amberlution. That's awful. Oh no! Oh, I needed that. Yeah. I mean, um, I don't have enough Amber and Untamed anyway. To right. set off the key frog. Right. What I was hoping to do was if I had a single pip in untamed and you didn't play Evervescent, I could have spike trapped the key frog. But uh, alas. Yeah. Yeah, I, I definitely think the I chose the right target for my reclaimed by nature there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at this point. Like if you'd had a bunch of amber on safe place, obviously that would have been the right choice, but I don't think you would have done that anyways, just because you know that the Reclaimed by Nature wasn't out yet. Right. 
Well, I'm just gonna reap for a bunch here. Yeah, with the resurgences at the beginning of the game, the untamed mm -hmm. seems very clunky. Right. Yeah, that was a really unfortunate mulligan for you. Like the untamed cards in my hand right now, it's it's horrible. Yeah, reaping for set uh, for three with the loom loomilu. Give you back the Qmax. This deck has 18 pips in it. It really didn't feel like it. Right. Yeah, I, I have no out. Good game. Good game. Yeah, I have Chonkers, Key Frog, Attendant, and Song of the Wild. Right. I wonder if I had, when I had 11 Amber earlier, I think as soon as I went up to 11, it got effervescent right away. So there wasn't even a chance for me to lock it in with the key frog. Yeah, you got, uh, well, you had 11 on one turn. I didn't have the effervescent, and then you forged. And then the next turn, you went to 11 again. And then I right. did have effervescent then. And then I, I took it from you. Yeah, the second time, although if you if you went to check, I had to play my effervescent. Right. It was the only amber control. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you have Keyfrog at that point? Uh, yeah, I had Keyfrog for a while. Um, I didn't want to go into Untamed because it was doing very little. Right. This makes me think like Resurgence is huge. For this particular deck? Yes. Yeah, I think that's true. Especially together with the Amberlution. What I remember doing last game, last week with it, was I brought back all those efficiency creatures, right? I brought back the Daughter and the, the Sacrobot, I think. Yep. Um, that really helped me, like, make a big play. You're, you're putting yourself into Logos on the next turn, but um, especially if you've got the Qmex in the Archive, that's not necessarily a bad thing. And the Daughters have... Uh, one of the daughters has enhancements on it anyways. Mm -hmm. And I held the reclaim by nature at the beginning of the game. Maybe I shouldn't have. Well, given how things turned out, I definitely shouldn't have done that. But I wonder oh. about the decision. Um, I mean, purging font of the eye was definitely part of the game plan. And right. it slowed me down. And I think it was it was the right call for sure. Yeah, but I think given the quality of the hand, maybe I should have just tried to go through it was like that bad. And mm -hmm. I didn't get back into untamed for several turns. So that that can be something to think about. Like if you have a really awful mulligan, like should you just drop everything? Right, right, right. Don't even bother with like trying to do something fancy and clever like oh, I'm going to hang this hang on to this reclaim by nature because I know they've got a dark amber vault coming something like that. Yeah, and then there was a second one too, which ended up being near the bottom actually. Yeah, yeah. I could have asked myself like can I live with four of these artifacts? Yeah, which like probably you could have I mean it, it still was a tight ended up being a tight game like you I, I held the lead for pretty much the entire game but you did manage to get up to two keys and th there was a there was a scary moment there when we were both at two keys and I had three amber yeah Greg can burst for sure and then and then locking down that key frog it can, it can be a bit tricky with the cards available, but it's definitely possible. Like like you were saying, the spike trap is one way to do it. The amber Lucian is another way to do it. I managed to get rid of the spike trap, and then you unluckily discarded the amber Lucian with your letho uh, at the end there. So yeah, that even even if I uh, didn't discard it, I don't have enough amber and untamed. Right. Yeah, that's the other thing is there's not a lot of uh, pips. Yeah, I think the pips are actually in shadows. Right. Which is interesting. Actually, looking at the cards here, I think the two reclaimed by nature's are the only uh, untamed pips. Yeah. You know, so like I guess my my takeaway from that opening hand was there are some cards in this deck like it's very important the order they turn up so even though i had like effervescent in the original opener mm -hmm. you could end up some somewhere far worse and it can be riskier for player two to mulligan as well like my first hand wasn't that bad right um, i did not anticipate how bad it could get um <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you know that was certainly a a good lesson 
Uh, I started with a bunch of Sanctum creatures, and that ended up being a pretty neat little play for me. I almost did a uh, Mulligan as well, but mm-hmm. but that Sanctum opener was really strong. I, I had a really strong start on the game to the point that you almost would have been fine with the FRS in principle in your hand anyways. That almost would have been a great thing for you if you'd waited until like your second or third turn. Because by then I had like seven or eight amber or something. Yeah, I think I overlooked the cleansing wave as a burst opportunity. Because yeah. extra demand looks like it bursts more based on the board. Right. So I thought at the beginning of the game it wasn't going to happen much. But then cleansing wave for three yeah uh, i i didn't think of that so i i'm finding in mass mutation like cleansing wave is hitting more for big numbers mm-hmm. so i think i'm going to look at that card more along the ways i look at like glorious few where okay i need to watch out for this because it could potentially gain up to as many creatures that are, are on the board yeah. plus whatever they play yeah because of the gray rider uh and there's smite in addition to the gray rider so those right. cards that like ready and fight and cleansing wave right got watch out for that and smite especially with the extra damage like just enough to um to break like a one one armor and get through there like you can i mean that's three amber right there if you can target the right spot on the board mm-hmm. well four actually if your own guy gets damaged as well uh, all right. Well, you got any uh, any other insights? Anything else you want to say about the game before we wrap it up here? Yeah, it was a pretty good game, and it seemed like Greg could have had a chance, even though the luck was not looking good. Mm-hmm. So I think it shows the potential in in Greg. Right. And I think you got particularly unlucky, and I got particularly lucky with the draw. I still think Greg is the favorite in this matchup most of the mm. time. I don't know. I was kind of I was a bit surprised by the um the burst potential of extra man. Yeah. And the board control was like really essential. Definitely. All right. Well, with that, we're going to wrap it up here. Another excellent game. Next week, I will be picking up Siaka's deck from last week, Dive Limb, the Z Force Asian deck, and Siaka will be playing a brand new deck that we have not seen yet. So be sure to check that out. Thank you once again for watching Cole of the Week. I've been Brabnar89. Thank you once again to Siaka. Thanks for having me. And we will see you next time on Call of the Week.